Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to set up your rig to mine Ether for the Ethereum cryptocurrency. So when you're mining Ether there's two key things that you're going to have to figure out. The first of which is the pool that you're going to be using and the second of which is the miner that you're going to be using. Both of those factors will combine to set up your situation for your uh, mining operation. Uh, so that could be something as small as a older uh, GPU on your gaming rig or even a multi GPU setup that's very elaborate with multiple computers even. Uh, I'm actually mining on my RX 380 that I have in my personal rig. Uh, it's not the newest card, it's a couple year generations old, um, but it still does decently well. Uh, so in this video, I've already chosen a pool and a miner. Uh, if you do kind of do your own research, and I highly recommend doing that, uh, looking for your own pool and your own miner, and coming up with your own conclusions. But in this pool, uh, this video, I have chosen a pool and a miner. You can swap out a pool in this video uh, tutorial very easily because uh, that is just going to be a little section of your uh, your command that you're going to set up for your miner, uh, and that'll be able to, very easy to swap out. And I'll tell you exactly where to swap that out in the command uh, window that you're going to be um, writing up. So the miner though, is going to be a little bit more complicated if you do swap that out. And you'll probably have to follow a different tutorial to get a one-to-one, -one, but this should provide a nice base understanding of what there is into getting into uh, what it takes to actually set up your computer to mine. It is a very simple operation. You can probably be up and mining within 15 minutes, assuming you don't come across some weird error, error with drivers or something along those lines. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this project. So the very first thing you're going to want to decide is which pool that you're going to be using uh, to mine. So there's multiple different options, but the one that I kind of came to is ethermine.org. I saw them recommended in uh, multiple different places, and I can't say so far that I have had any negative experiences. The default payout is uh, one ether, but you can lower this. There is a, a very small fee, I think it's 0 .0001 ether. Uh, if you do lower this anything less than one ether but since i'm kind of just dabbling in this i'm not really doing this uh to make money i just find the concept of cryptocurrency pretty fascinating and uh wanted to get back into it now that i've heard uh got, heard of ethereum so much in, you know in the past week uh and that it is something you can actually do with the gpu and you haven't been able to do that with bitcoin for quite some time uh at least not any means of being uh efficient at all so uh, with the ethermine.org uh, pool, they actually have great resources um, if you scroll down on their main page uh, on, and have a couple different miners that they recommend. Uh, the miner that I have chosen is uh, Genoli's miner. Uh, I know there's also a lot of people that use Claymore's miner. Uh, there is a lot of debate in the community of which is better. The Claymore's miner does have a little more uh, efficiency gains, I've read, but there is a fee associated with using that miner. Um, so there's a little kind of a balancing what you're going to be using, but the Genoli's miner is the first one I that I used that worked flawlessly. So that's kind of what I've uh, deployed and uh, am going to be using in this uh, tutorial. Uh, but if you do want to change that out, uh, go ahead and I do recommend you doing a lot of uh, research on your own and choosing your uh, the miner that kind of fits what you're looking for. So uh, and especially if you're planning on doing this with like making a rig dedicated to mining, uh, you probably want to get the one that's the most efficient. So maybe look into clay more a little deep, deeper and see if those efficiency gains are worth it when you take in the, the account, uh, the, the fee that's associated. And I'm sure it is. Um, but I just decided to use a very simple option for this tutorial. So you'll have a link right here that has the uh, link to the Windows download. And you'll actually see they already have the, your setup guide. Uh, right here what you're going to enter into your your batch file i will walk you through the whole process of making a batch file if you've never done that before uh, it is very simple to do um, so let's go ahead and jump to that link which i already have open so it'll actually be brought to uh, this root page i've already actually navigated to the latest, latest version you can see the range is from 1.0.7 to 1.1.7 so just click on the latest version uh, and you'll be ready to click the download button after clicking the download button, you'll be brought to an option to save the file, and then it'll be brought to your downloads folder on your, your Windows device. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump to that, and we'll pick up from there. All right, so I have my downloads folder pulled up, and you can see the zip file that I just downloaded. Uh, I'm going to right-click on that, and it should be the third option from the top, but if not, you're looking for a command called extract all. 
go ahead and right click button and extract all. And what I'm going to do here is just take off a little bit of the verbiage from the end of that folder just to make it a little bit cleaner. Uh, I'm going to click extract all and a new folder will pop up and inside of it, it has a folder nested that has the full version number. Uh, what I'll probably do is keep a couple different versions as uh, new versions do release in the future if that does happen. In case one version, for example, the older version still does work, but the new version might have some form of bug that might have a performance hit. I'll keep the old version so I can fall back on it, if, if assuming that it still does work fine. Uh, opening that folder, you'll see a very small amount of files. There's going to be a, a handful of TLF files and then your .exe, which is your application execu executable. Uh, we'll be using that in a little bit in our batch file, and you'll actually place your batch file right here. And if you've never made a batch file and you're completely confused about what I'm saying, it's super simple. I'm going to walk you through that step by step. So we're going to want to open our internet browser back up and go to that uh, command uh, guide that they have already created nicely for us. You're going to want to copy that whole block of text in that white block. So go ahead and copy that. And now you're going to hit your little search icon here. Or if it's your main screen, you'll have the full kind of search bar there uh, by default, which you can turn that off in Windows. But by default, it's there. And most people still keep it there. What you're going to type, want to type here is Notepad. I do have Notepad++. Plus plus. You can see it right here. I do recommend that. I always like to plug that every time I have an opportunity to. It's a free software. It's a great software, especially if you do a lot of coding. It has a tons of different uh, syntax for tons of different programming language, languages. It's super clean, a uh, very good uh, Notepad app. But I'm going to go ahead and use the standard uh, proper Notepad app uh, from, from made by Microsoft. It's super basic, and it's on every Windows forever ago. Um, so whatever you have and run, running from Windows 7, uh, to 10, um, you'll have it for sure. Uh, so go ahead and paste that in here. I have never messed with the first five lines of commands. Uh, if you did want to allocate less than 100% of your GPU, you could do that here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump to the dash S and your dash FS as the first things I'm going to be talking about. So your dash S and your dash FS, uh, which is something a lot of servers don't or guides don't really touch on too much is your server and your failsafe fail server. So this is the server you're going to be connecting to for your pool data. Uh, and in your FS, is your failsafe server you're going to be connecting to your pool data. For, so for some reason, the server that is, your pool is running, it can't communicate to for some reason. Uh, maybe it's down or maybe it's being hit hard by a lot of different miners. Uh, you have a failsafe server they can also try to communicate to. Uh, right here, they actually have all the different ones uh, for uh, that you can actually connect to and they have the same servers actually have multiple different ports You can try accessing if for some reason uh, you're having trouble accessing over a certain port uh, So one thing I recommend is if you're in North America or Europe You actually have two good choices choose the one that's closest to you or if you're in the center Just throw a coin and pick one of them uh, So uh, they actually have EU one as the primary one. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that by uh, the US one and since I'm pretty much in the center of the US, and go ahead and replace the second one with US2. If I would have paid attention, US1 was already in the fail safe. I could have left it there and just put US2 over there and not had to spend much time. But since this is a guide, I'm just gonna kind of continue going on with that. So you can see here that my, my, my primary server is US1, which is gonna be the North America East server. And my fail safe, fail safe server is US2. Uh, if for some reason the East Coast server is not responding. Uh, your dash O is going to be your Ethereum address. So if you watch my other video on setting up your wallet, uh, that'll be your main account address. So, or it will actually not your main account. It could be any of your Ether accounts that you want to have your uh, Ether deposited into uh, once you reach, reach the payout threshold. Once again, for this poll, that is one Ether, but you can modify that. But if you do modify that less than one ether there is a very small uh, fee associated with that so I just copied that big long key, uh, th uh, um, account key uh, to my clipboard All right, so I've copied my uh, Ethereum key uh, from my wallet, and I'm going to paste that over here. So now I have my uh, Ethereum key. 
Uh, once you have set up a single batch file, you can actually modify that uh, for multiple different machines if you are setting up a multi-machine uh, kind of mining operation. So this last part right here is your rig name. Uh, so for example, my machine's called Iron Man because Iron Man's simply badass. Uh, so uh, I've just named this rig uh, Iron Man so I can easily distinguish that in the, the mining information if I did set up multiple different machines in the future. So now this is where you actually go to make your batch file. By default, you'll it'll save as the .txt file. You're gonna go to save as though, and you're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, go to your downloads folder and go to your etherminer folder that your the executable folder is actually stored in. All right, so now we're gonna save this as a batch file. The big thing here is to keep in mind is that by default, a notepad is going to save as a .txt file, uh, but to save it as a batch file, you're going to want to click at save as. So by default, you're going to be in your desktop, but I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my downloads folder and go to the folder that the actual uh, application is actually stored in. I'm going to change this to all files now. And you'll see that all the folder, all the different DLL files and the executable file are actually now pop up. I'm going to call this uh, run, or you can call it start, or really anything. Uh, and now the big thing here is to type BAT. That's going to make Windows know that this is a, ba a batch file. So go ahead and click save. And we're going to open up that folder that we had earlier. You'll now see a run.bat. So you can see that Windows automatically determines that that's a Windows batch file. So uh, you can see in here that we have this all set up. We have two servers set up, a main server and a failsafe server, and we have our Ethereum wallet and our username. So going from there, we have our Windows batch, uh, batch file. I'm gonna go ahead and close down my one that I was using because I'm setting this up with the new account to kind of give you guys a walkthrough from start to finish with a brand new account and a brand new, brand new uh, mining profile. So all you have to do is click run.bat. Uh, keeps on popping up a different screen, but I'll run through some initial uh, things. Uh, first, don't be concerned if there's a whole bunch of zero um, megahertz, uh, mega hashes uh, in, in a given point. I always have that for some reason. I don't know why uh, until it does this uh, uh, OpenCL initialization. Uh, once that reaches a reaches 100, I actually do start getting uh, some actual um, reporting. So I have an RX 380 and pretty much all the time it's bouncing between 15 and 20. Every once in a while I do see tens, uh, but for the most part it's somewhere in a, in a 15 point something range and a 20 point something range and it bounces between those pretty steadily. Uh, so you can see that it's already now it's now already mining. So from there you can actually go back to your pool and enter your Ethereum address that you just copied earlier to put in your batch file. So let's go ahead and do that. So in a final step of this uh, project, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the pools website and check the status of the miners. So at the pools website, you'll see this little address uh, search bar at the top, and it'll have you'll be able to type in your address and hit click uh, check status. Doing that, you'll be brought to a page with uh, your for your dashboard for all of your mining. Uh, everything that's for that account, and you can set up multiple computers inside of that account. You can see that each worker, which will be each rig that you name uh, below, will show the worker's name, uh, the reported hash rate, which that's always been zero um, in all my uh, setups. So I don't know if that is actually reported or sent through correctly, or if, the, if Ethermine doesn't really read that. But the current hash rate and average hash rate uh, are will th be things that uh, uh, that are kind of inaccurate right off the bat. But after this is ran for about an hour or two, you'll actually be getting pretty accurate numbers down here. So let that run for a little while, then go ahead and check, and then you can actually be notified uh, if you wanted to. So there's a couple different things here in the payouts. Um, so you'll actually be able to see your estimated earnings. Uh, that's based on the current difficulty and your average uh, output over the last 24 hours. So after a full day, you'll be able to come here and get a little bit of estimated earnings. Uh, you can see at the top that the difficulty increases in four days. Um, that's the next uh, DAG. Uh, and then, so your, your difficulty might change. Uh, it, will, will, it will change more than likely uh, pre pre pretty often. Um, so you can't just like say in three months, I'll have 
you know, one ether based upon my current output of, you know, my current month, um, I'll have, you know, 0.33 or something like that. So in one month I'll, or three months, I'll have uh, essentially one ether. Uh, but you can get a rough estimate of what you will have. Uh, you know, beyond that, there are some settings. Um, so you can actually have an email you if one of your workers goes down, which is a handy feature, especially if you're planning on doing this with more of a big operation, having multiple different rigs uh, and possibly at different multiple different locations. You can have an email you if something goes wrong. And if you have like any type of remote desktop software set up on your computer, you can always remote into it, see what's going wrong, possibly restart the miner if it crashed or something and get back to mining. Uh, you can actually change your uh, ether payout uh, that's what I was talking about in earlier in this video. Your minimum is 0 0.05, which is actually pretty easy to get to. Uh, your max is 10 ether. And if you set it less than one, it's a 0 0.001 uh, fee that will be charged. Uh, so just keep that in mind of how you, uh, how much you, how low you want to set it based upon if you want to pay an extra fee for getting it out a little bit early. Uh, and then to validate, you just have to type a lot, uh, your IP address, your public IP address uh, of one of your workers, and then that, your settings will be uh, validated. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, I hope that kind of gave you a good idea of what's involved to set up a miner, choosing a pool, and getting everything rocking and rolling uh, in, in, for your mining operation, whether that is just a single GPU or something you're gonna scale with multiple different workers and have a kind of a, a more complex and a more output uh, driven uh, setup. I'm just using my old rig, but you can easily scale this to a rig with multiple GPUs or even a multi-rig setup with each of them having multi-GPUs. Uh, so I hope this video was informative. I hope it gave you a little bit better insight into what's involved in getting up and mining. As you saw in this video, I went from the start to the finish process and did it nice and slow. So it doesn't take very long at all to get up and running. Uh, and I hope that gave you a good idea of the entire process. If you do switch out miners, it will be pretty comparable, but you might have some of the config changing ch settings that you make in your batch file will be pretty different, but a lot of the pools are pretty good about giving you a good setup file to start off with. And you just make some minor modifications to get it going with the servers and stuff that you want to set it up to have as your main server and your fail safe server. Uh, so if you did like this video, give it a big like and also consider subscribing to Top Provoking Tech. If you do subscribe or you're a new subscriber or already an existing subscriber even and you haven't already done so, consider hitting the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That'll let you be notified as I release new videos. I do still plan on uh, doing another video in the Ethereum kind of uh, series with the focus being on backing up and importing a, uh, your accounts into a wallet in case your computer crashes or you're moving to a new computer. Uh, so I will be covering that in another video and the previous video, if you missed that, is on the wallets. Um, but I'm assuming that since you've made it to this part, you already have an account and you've already set up a wallet. But if for some reason you didn't, go watch that video and that'll kind of give you the basis for what you need to do to get this video up and running. Uh, if you do like what I'm doing with Thought Provoking Tech, consider going over to my Patreon link, which will be in the description below. And it's also been on the banner that's rotated through occasionally through this video. Uh, and being my Patreon, I greatly appreciate that uh, and any support. And you can always actually tip me at my uh, Ethereum account if you so wish. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, Zach out.